Hello, and welcome to Elantum Digital's Publishing by the Numbers, where we help authors and self-publishers create quality books and build successful self-publishing businesses. This week we're going to be talking about publishing. We're going to define some terms because it's really going to help us to be able to all be on the same page if we know what we're talking about. So you probably already know what publishing is, but we're going to dig into it just a little bit more. This is episode number two. I'm Janet S. Brown and my amazing co-hosts are Virginia Anderson and CJ Hello. and Aya. Welcome, ladies. Hey. So let's do our good news minute. Does anybody have some good news they want to share? Cool things that have happened in their career this this year, this year, this, this week, this, year, this week, week. It, it all starts mushing together. What was <laughs> something cool going on in your world, Virginie? Uh, not particular personally, but I got really excited with this new recent uh, collaboration between Find Away Voices and Spotify. So definitely a place that, you know, a space that we should watch out and keep an eye on. But right now I'm getting pretty excited uh, by that. CJ, what's going on that's cool in your world? Oh, I am. I'm. What's cool is that I'm beating a deadline or trying to writing a second hey. book in a series, which is always great because I need to publish more, and that is truth. Um, but I also got uh, these covers that I've wanted to. So a lot of cover designers will do these really fun pre-made shows. Natasha Snow does pre-made shows. I actually want to get her on here because what she does is fabulous. She'll she'll prep people. She'll find out the kind of covers that they want in her group. Anyone who likes her group on Facebook, and she'll find all these people who love covers and she'll do covers for different types of niches that they write in. And she'll say, what do you guys think of this? What do you think of that? And they're beautiful. They're gorgeous pre-made covers that are very specific to each niche market with, within, you know, all of the followers she has. So I let her know that I needed to rebrand my sci-fi series when she was like, Oh, I got it. And she made covers that were incredible. And I bought all three of them, even though I'm only writing book two right now. But I got him. I was so excited. I was like, this is going to be perfect for marketing. So I'm rebranding the first book. The second book's getting these new covers as well. Once I finally publish it, I'm super excited about it. So good news for me. Yeah, that is awesome. Very, very good. And we'll put uh, Natasha, we'll put Natasha Snow in the show notes so that you guys can find her too. Yes. Um, For me, I had a release on Tuesday. So Life's Daughter is now out in the wild, which I'm very excited about. That's my book two in a series. And the the last book in the trilogy is hopefully fingers, you know, fingers and toes and whatever else crossed coming out in January or February of next year. So that'll be nice to put that series to bed and jump right into the next thing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Fantastic, ladies. Okay, well, then let's jump into talking about publishing. So we all know there's different types of publishing, that publishing has been around for a while. And it's, you know, the the whole thing that we all do is, is that we have careers in publishing. So just for kicks and giggle, let's start with a little bit about traditional publishing. I'm going to toss this to CJ. What the heck is traditional publishing? And then why would you want to do it? So traditional publishing is when you take your beautiful, wonderful baby that you've written and you write query letters and you shop it out to agents and publishers. And essentially what the publisher does is they license it, I guess you would say. Um, They they get the, the copyright for it. They own the rights to it. It makes me nervous just saying it, but this is what is done. <laughs> um, and uh, and because they own the rights to your book, they negotiate a contract with you as far as what kind of royalties you get, what they're going to do on their end. Um, usually, traditionally speaking, although things have changed over the years, they would handle the cover design. They would handle all of the editing necessary, the book formatting, the interior, all, all that jazz. Um, you as a writer just needed to hit your deadlines, okay? Um, Um, And and even they would go so far, especially within the big five, now possibly big four, although I think that's ongoing. It's ongoing. (laughs) It's ongoing. Um, What they would do is they would have a marketing department specifically for you as to what they were going to do for you, which also really depends on whether you're a big A-lister author or or someone that they're just testing the waters for. You know, it kind of depends on the marketing dollars spent there. But the idea is that you write and they handle the business end of things and they handle the book production end of things and they handle the distribution of things. And, you know, historically speaking, traditional publishers are, are much better at distributing physical 
copies of books uh, than indie publishers and self-publishers just because we don't have the same resources um, until recently, really. And even then we're still learning how to how to navigate that. So, so that is uh, traditional publishing in a nutshell. Fantastic, mm. great nutshell. So Virginie, what about traditional publishing makes you make that face that you made earlier? <laughs> the, the, the one that says, oh, help me, help me, please. Oh, let what me are think. the cons of being traditionally published? Let me think, where do I start? So uh, I think, uh, what was the stat that says only, what was it that only really small number, 7% of people using the traditional publishing do sell more than 100 books a year? Yeah, uh, yeah. most traditional books, to. yeah. They, yeah. Most traditional books sell less than 2,000 copies. Yeah, um, that's it. That's, uh, that. So when CJ said that they, they look after the business and the things, they look after the business of the yes. thing yeah so, we'll, we'll see that in quotation marks won't we <laughs> yes yes so uh the 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 whole idea the whole you know the the fantasy uh, in the fantasy land it will be you know you get spotted by a big uh traditional publisher and then they're going to give you an advance and then you go you know you 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 can't just dedicate yourself to your art and they will to look after all that that's a fantasy most of the time it doesn't it that really rarely happens so if that was the only solution this would never be something that I would pursue because it's just not a model that makes sense to me from my background it's not in you know in writing so I look at everything that I go in with uh uh, is it is it something that's sustainable? Is that something that I can I can do on my own? And if you go in the traditional publishing path, no way, no way. I I wouldn't be interested. So it's very prestigious if you get published by a one of those big, um, uh, even semi big uh, traditional publisher uh, publishing ha- uh, houses. I think there's a snobism that comes with. Uh, being traditionally published you know there's this you know only serious authors get published by uh, those big uh, companies because they recognize your work they recognize your art and that's how uh, you know that's there's a a recognition Uh, I don't care about recognition I care about whether I'm going to be able to put food on the table and uh the you know with self publishing which we're going to talk about later on this is a complete game changer and the, the, this is the reason why i decided to come into this business it's because there's so much uh potential traditional publishing and eh, now nah, that's the face so yeah there's the face. So <laughs> what I will interject in here is just a couple of thoughts. There are genres and specific things that are actually done better in traditional publishing. Um, I, I will take this line here. Things like um, children's books, especially very young picture book kind of children's books, you can self-publish them. They are a lot harder to distribute as a self-publisher than through traditional publishing because traditional publishing connects to schools. And it's the same thing if you are writing a textbook or something like that, and you're hoping to have it in colleges, you're not going to be able to self-publish and get it to the the local college. You're just not. Um, the, The local college is either buying through traditional sources, and they have all sorts of contracts, so they really can't, or they hire their own professors to write these kinds of books. So there are a few little niche things where really traditional publishing still rules the world, but it's mostly very young children, um, that, that kind of thing where you're looking through the schools, you're looking to, to be able to distribute that way, textbooks. Um, and they still are a little bit better with some of the foreign distribution, but that has changed so much. And I think it will continue to change to where self-publishers really can do almost everything a traditional publisher can do. Mm-hmm. Now, before we move on, though, let's talk about small and medium presses. So when we think about traditional publishing, it's usually, like we say, the big five, the big four, uh, Simon & Schuster, Random House, um, all of those kinds of things. But there are a lot of medium and small presses out there 
where they're not going to have the same kind of distribution, they're not going to have the same kind of necessarily advances, but is there any benefit to looking at a small press when you're first learning this whole process? I any ideas? Uh, I think that there can be if you're able to learn from them. So, uh, for example, there is this um, this group called Inkit. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys ever looked at them, but it was basically very similar to Wattpad, where you could um, publish your books for free or write for free and, and release chapters for free. And what they would do is they would analyze how their community responded to your books. And based on the open rate, the read through rate, based on the reviews that you were getting, they would analyze all of that. And then they would offer you a publishing contract. Um, if, if they, what they found was that there was a market for your book, which I found really fascinating. I thought that was great. Um, and then what they offered authors was to actually teach them how to do social media marketing for themselves. They would help them set up newsletter swaps. They would help them learn autoresponders. They would help them do all of these things that I actually already knew how to do. I was just putting my first book that was free up there to draw more people to all of my books everywhere else. So for me, it was more of a strategy to get people locked into my series. So when they came um, offering contracts. I looked at those contracts and I was like, no, thank you. Um, but I did like the fact that they were willing, that particular company was willing to teach authors how to do social media marketing and how to do newsletters and how to have a presence online. And I think that there are some publishing companies that will take the time to do that, especially when you're new. They're going to tell you exactly what you need to do to set up your online presence if you've never before done that. So I think it's a good way to get into the business if you can and have kind of a helping hand there. But it's, it's all about goals. If you are a writer who loves to write and just wants your book out there and you're not necessarily interested in making a ton of money and you really hate the idea of marketing and you really hate the idea of a business plan, then I am telling you traditional publishing is absolutely your thing. And there's nothing wrong with that because if that's your goal, just get it published, get it out there and feel absolutely validated and vindicated and so excited that people are buying it and that the gatekeepers were like, okay, we like this. We want to publish it. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but as far as just being able to make a living off of your writing, even with small presses, it is still, it, it's really difficult to do. Um, so you can learn certain things from small presses, but again, the marketing isn't necessarily there. They can teach you stuff, but not all small presses will do that. So, you know, pros and cons, do your research with all of those. Absolutely. And a big thing that you touched on there is in traditional publishing, and, and this crosses over to self-publishing, but contracts. Contracts are really important and you must read every single line of it. If you don't understand something, get an IP lawyer, have them review it. It's worth the money you pay to make sure you're not being taken advantage of. And please remember that a contract is just words written on a paper. It, it's not something that can't be changed. And often people say, well, it's, it's the contract, it's take it or leave it. Almost all contracts have some level of negotiation. So if a press wants a right that you don't want to give up, Cross it out before you send it back and tell them you want to negotiate this point um, because you want to make sure that if you're going to go traditional, you have to make sure that you're going to get the benefits of that. Um, and at this point, traditional does generally require an agent who will take at least 15% of everything that comes to you. Everything. It will all, all, all things, they will take 15%. So just know that that's what you're looking at and traditional publishing is very slow. So you can have a book accepted and average time to print is 18 to 24 months after that. And that's just for one book. So we'll talk some more in self-publishing about how quickly you can get books out. Know that traditional is slow. All right. So that said, since we've hinted at self-publishing so many times, and that's really obviously where our hearts are, uh, all exist. Virginie, what is self-publishing? It's my love, my other love. <laughs> 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 music playing in the background so self-publishing oh, yes. is the ability for authors or people who commission their book to be written by a ghostwriter to publish their book themselves so they look after all the uh, i guess the downside of self-publishing is you have to look after all the different aspects of the um of that business so from writing to book production to um, marketing and advertising. Uh, but you have 100% control. 
you decide where you want to sell those books. You decide how you want to sell those books. You even decide who you know you want to write those books for. Um, so there's a lot of uh, freedom in uh, being a self-publisher. You don't need to print out hundreds, thousands of copies of your book in order to be able to sell your book. There's platforms like KDP, Ingram Spark that actually print the book on demand for you. So you don't have to pay that outlay you know, at the, uh, from the offset, uh, and which is also a, a, a problem for a lot of uh, authors. You know, they don't have you know, thousands and thousands, and tens of thousands of dollars to go and get a printing company to print their books. So with platforms like KDP, Ingram Spark, and some other platforms, you don't print any of the book ahead of time. Every time someone wants a copy of your, a physical copy of your book, those platforms will um, print the book for you and you they take their, you know, their, their printing costs and all their, their share and then you keep the rest. I guess this is really more like running like a business. So this is not just a passion project. You know, you have a book and you want to put it out there. This is, it requires you to really think more like it as a business. What kind of book you want, what you want to write, how you want to market it, the price, uh, the distribution channels. I love this because it gives me so many, um, uh, I guess, options in how I want to uh, build a successful self-publishing business. I guess it's just a lot of control and also the other thing that I really love about this whole idea of books and digital products is because it's digital. You're going to have a lot of pain with physical products. You know, you have to worry about shipping, inventory. COVID definitely didn't help any of those. Whereas when you have a digital ebook, this is like something that's just keep on going, uh, provided that you provide, provided that you create a, a quality book and provided that you do the marketing and, and the advertising side of things. Nothing good comes with zero effort or patience. So the self-publishing can get you to uh, publish your book in a really much, much shorter uh, amount of time. But uh, self-publishing or not self-publishing, if, if there's no marketing done, no one will discover your books. So instead of thinking, oh, I hate marketing and advertising and promotion, there's no way that I'm ever going to do that. I'm going to think, think what if it was fun? What is actually get me to uh, meet a lot of other wonderful people, like-minded people? And I want to make it like more joyful, right? So you might hate it now. One day you wake up and you say, oh, actually this marketing thing is not that bad. And it's really, really not that, that bad. We're going to show you there's a lot of fun ways to do marketing. Uh, and it's not, uh, it's not the capital punishment that some of you might think that it is. So CJ, to put you on the spot, what are the really sucky parts about self-publishing? What drives people away from self-publishing? Oh, well, what drives people away from self-publishing is the fact that they're essentially their own publishing house. They're doing all the work that a publishing house would do, and they're taking on the cost of that with no guarantee that their book is going to sell. You, you are spending all of this time writing the book uh, for some folks who have tons of ideas, but don't feel like they're a very good writer. Maybe they're paying a ghostwriter to co-write it with them, or the ghostwriter is taking on the majority of that work and you're, you're paying for that. Um, then you're paying for the editing and you do need to edit that book, at least, you know, have someone line edit, copy edit it. Uh, and, and so that is a cost. The cover design is very important. You have to make sure that it, it, it covers to the market um, and that the cover is specific or will sell to a specific type of readership. And, um, and that costs money. And you have to make sure that the book is formatted according to ebook and uh, paperback guidelines uh, that Amazon gives out. Uh, is it as well as any other retail site that you want to publish on? So there are a lot of things to consider. It's not just about writing the book. It's then packaging it and producing it and, and making sure that it hits the market in the right way so that you can sell it. Um, and then once it's as pristine and beautiful and wonderful as you can make it and you've published it, then you're worried about the other half, which is discoverability. And that's what that's what uh, Virginie touched on a little bit, you know. 
how do you learn the right way to market your book in your particular niche market? Because it's not going to be the same for every other niche market. There are some things that will cross over, but you have to learn for yourself. And a publishing house supposedly, usually, and historically speaking, did take on the majority of this work. We're finding out more and more now that even with the big four and big five, they actually really expect a lot out of you when it comes to your social media presence. And a lot of these uh, traditional publishers aren't actually signing new authors on unless they have a newsletter already or unless they have a very large social media presence on there. So we're seeing more and more that the bulk of the work is being put on authors uh, even when they are traditionally published. So I think that that is kind of a little challenging for those in the self-publishing industry who, who sit there and they say, oh, I just want someone to do this for me. And, and I want to let you, I want you to understand that you don't have to do it all yourself. There are some people who love to do it by themselves, like me. I love everything about the editing. I mean, I obviously I get another pair of eyes on it. I promise I do. Um, and I love the, the formatting aspect. I love working with a cover designer, but, but as an indie author, I have a team of people that I work with to be this self-contained publishing house, basically. So it's not like you have to do all of the work yourself, but you do have to pay for it. Uh, whether it's you doing all of it or whether it's a team that you've built that is working with you to produce books. So it is a bit of a balance to scale that up, to write the books, to produce them, to have people on your team helping you produce them and uh, kind of spinning all of those plates because it does take a lot of different types of expertise and at the very least a little bit of basic knowledge on how all of it works, how that book production process works and, and how you need to find the right freelancers to help you with it. So that can be very daunting. Hence the, anyone who hates that <laughs> and just wants to write and get published, run, flee, flee to traditional publishing. And I understand that, I really do, but you can build your team to help you. And I think that's the beauty of self-publishing. But I think to that, it's really important to look at this as a business. This is not a right. hobby. This is not a, some set gig. This is a business. If you guys are here and watching this or uh, listening to this uh, podcast, podcast <laughs> this that we threw um, together. <laughs> <laughs> it's that you are, you have maybe some, you've heard of something about this as a business model, or maybe you're at least curious about what it is. So just like in any business, there's investment that need to be made. There's money that will be spent that you have no idea whether you will come back as a return. But, and in any business, any business, like without an exception, you have to do marketing and advertising. You have to make a choice at some point. I might, do I want to run my own business? Or do I want to work for someone else? And there's nothing shameful for working with someone else. But some of, I know that, for example, personally, I'm totally unemployable. I cannot, <laughs> I don't think She's I- She's unemployable. Will, she does not want a boss. <laughs> I don't yeah, think yeah. I can ever go back to the corporate world and being told what to do because I have a, a mind of my own and I want to make those decisions. And I have no- uh, no doubt, like the that the the, the pros overweigh the 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 cons. I'll, I'll piggyback on that. It's okay to be a hobby writer too. That there yeah. are some people who have a book of their heart that they want to write, and self publishing can help you get that book out. Because very often that book of your heart may not be something that traditional publishing is seeking. Mm. It's just that when we talk about these, you do have to decide what is your goal and what is your success. You, you notice that when we talk about what we're here to do, we don't talk about how much money you're going to make. We talk about you creating a successful business. And successful comes down to what do you want out of it? And if you, what you want, you know, my, my mother helps me write cookbooks and she is amazing and she is not looking for a career in cookbook writing, but she loves cooking and she loves sharing those things. So to have her cookbooks up online and people can buy them, it, it just makes her so very, very happy. And in this case, she can work with me. And, and so I, I take a lot of that off of her. But if somebody wants to do it as a hobby, it's here. You just have to understand what those costs are and what is your success. And if your success is a career, a bigger business, 
then it takes those investments and risks. If it's that you really want to see this book out there, then all the more power to you. You just may or may not make all of that back. And it, it just kind of depends on your book. So that leads me to something else that I really love about self-publishing. Because we don't have editorial gatekeepers, we can reach our markets directly. And there is a market for everything that you, you really can't come up with a subject that there isn't a market for. Now, that market may only be five people, in which case that's not going to be you know an, an easy financial place to go into, or that market may be hundreds or thousands of people. And very often, traditional publishing will declare that a certain genre is, is done. So like for years, it's been that the vampire craze is over, vampires are now dead, and you know, as though they weren't before. Um, <laughs> but there is a really strong market out there of people who still want to read vampire books. I do. And if traditional isn't giving it to them, and you've got great vampire books, you just have to find that market and connect. And in traditional, selling 5,000 copies of something is a failure. That That's not enough copies to justify their costs. And that's a very much a business decision. Your, your traditional editor can love you, can love your books, but it, it's a business decision. Every book must sell so many copies in order to be profitable. And they'll drop an author for not selling enough copies. But for a self-publisher, because we keep so much more of the royalties, if you sell 5,000 copies, any self-publisher would be dancing in the aisles because that, that represents a giant chunk of money for you and something that you can keep building on. So I really love that. I, I love that I can control those things. I love that I can write to niches, that I can write things that I feel like are a little crazy. And then you get out there and go, oh, look, there's a whole market of people who want to read this, this thing that I put together, this cross genre thing, this, this, you know, a lot of that that we cannot get through uh, traditional publishing. So oh. I think that's, that's a really good pro is that we can hit those markets. And by the way, royalty wise, you get so much more royalty when you self publish than if you go via traditional publishers, like so much more. Yeah. So, much more. so. Mm-hmm. Or orders of magnitude on depending on the format. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's yeah. really significant. Yeah. So, okay. Well, fantastic. So we're going to move down to there's a couple more things we wanted to talk about today. And this one I'm actually going to aim back at CJ because we're going to talk about being hybrid. And we're going to start with the first definition, which is what happens when you have one foot in two different worlds. And since CJ of all of us started in traditional publishing, there, there's her dirty little secret, guys, um, which, which you told us about on the last podcast. So it's not really that oh, much of a secret anymore. <laughs> um, so, so what is it like to have done both? Would you want to go back to having some stuff traditional and some self-published? What, what are the benefits that you see to this? And it's called a hybrid option. You'll hear people talk about it online. So what does it mean to be hybrid? What it means to be hybrid is that you, you do publish things yourself, but you also have other deals with other publishing companies, um, even, even to the point where you're just, you know, maybe licensing a specific right. So, and I'm thinking about, um, oh, did I just blink on his name? Hugh Howie. Was it Hugh Howie mm-hmm. who negotiated the rights for his eBooks um, yeah. and sold the rights of his paperback books, which was, I mean, that is an anomaly. Not a lot of people can do that, but that's just one example of how you could sell or license specific rights to certain companies because they can do a better job of getting certain things produced for you. For example, I have a friend who licensed her German rights to a German publishing company. They've done a fabulous job of traditionally publishing her German version books. Um, these are, and, and it's because teen and young adult fantasy is really quite popular in the German market. Um, and I don't know, maybe you're familiar with her, A.L. Noor. Mm -hmm. Uh, She does the elemental books. And so she's told me all about her experiences um, working with this German company and how they've, um, you know, translated all of her, her books um, into German and, uh, and they're working on audiobooks right now. And they're also starting to do uh, the Italian versions. So it's fascinating to me, but she owns all of the rights in, in English. So she, so it's a, it's a bit of a hybrid scenario where certain rights can be sold to traditional publishers um, and licensed movie to them. rights, movie rights. Oh, that's a big one. You I know? don't want to touch my movie rights. That I, That's I a hard one either. to do. I, you know, it's hard to get those. Uh, you really do. And you especially want that to be a traditional way to go with an agent um, because you're going to need a script. You're going to need to option your, your stuff for film. And, uh, and that's a path that is better traveled with an agent 
them by yourself. Um, so there are ways in which you can have certain parts of a specific book um, traditionally published in different countries with different rights. And sometimes you just flat out are like, you know what, for this book and this series, I want to go with a different publishing house. So um, I have a couple of friends who are published with Tor because they do a better job of publishing their sci-fi books and their fantasy books. And so they have stuck with Tor, even though they've done other series on their own and self-published those. So that is what it means to be hybrid. You, you do have a few things. And I think, to be honest, I think that diversity is good. I think that diversity is very helpful because there are just certain rights and certain formats that you cannot push on your own. And so getting that help and the distribution, um, there are different publishing companies that, that, okay, you don't want to publish with us, but you could actually um, pay them a certain percentage of royalties to have them distribute your books for you the way that a traditional publisher would distribute your books. So you've got, uh, you've got access to their wholesalers, you've got access to libraries, and they're going to shop that out for you in a way that as a self-published author, you cannot do it. It's very difficult. And so it is sometimes worth it to not give those rights away, but just pay them a percentage of your royalties to get those books distributed. And so yeah, there. That's basically what hybrid publishing is. I think it's the best of both worlds, really. Fantastic. Yeah, and I, I look at it and I go, you know, I really love my self publishing, but I can be bought. Um, if if someone were to come by and say, well, because you think about The Martian by Andy Weir, that right. started self publishing, and he was selling a lot of copies. And this is the thing: if if you're expecting traditional to come along and offer you a bunch of money, it can happen. But it only happens if you are self-publishing and doing really, 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 really well. Um, yeah. He was selling, as I recall, on the order of like half a million copies a year kind of thing. Yeah. And then what, what they licensed was, again, to go into the movies and then to do certain amount of reprints. So he, he licensed things very carefully because traditional came knocking because the self-publishing was so good. So if my self-publishing was good enough that traditional had an interest... I would at least hear them out because mm -hmm. there may be those rights that you talked about that I can't access myself as easily. And, and I have a number I can be bought. What was it, Virginia? <laughs> well, I was going to say uh, I, back again, there's definitely, definitely a snobism that comes with the traditional publisher. So Fifty Shades of Grey is a great example. Um, look what where she is at. I mean, this, this, this is... Well, she knew her audience and she, she knew her market. She knew her she audience. Did a dang good job with word of mouth. I mean, she killed it. Yeah. You know, crying, um, crying all the way to the bank. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's it's amazing, like where she's at. I mean, you know, in terms of the all the options that 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 have been open to her, and yet she is uh, self published. Don't be snob. Don't be snob about this. This is don't be snob about this. Mm -hmm. You can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of different options out there. And so we, we want you to know that while, you know, we have leanings towards the way that we like to do our business, the way that we're going to really focus on as we're talking about different things for the podcast, we will help you with any of these directions that you choose to go um, because there are some really, really great options all the way around. So it's pretty cool. Um, we're going to talk about there's another kind of hybrid publishing, and it's one where it kind of comes with an author beware or, or buyer beware, whatever you want to call it. And mm -hmm. that is there. They call themselves hybrid presses. And these are places where you sign a contract like you do with a traditional publisher. And they're going to do certain things to distribute your book, and they are your publisher of record. They're the ones who upload your books and all of that kind of thing. However, they tend to ask you to pay for certain services. So you may pay for your own editing. You may pay for your own cover. You may do this kind of things. Some of them will ask for money up front that you're going to buy a certain number of copies of your own book with and all those kind of things. These presses are dangerous water. Mm -hmm. There are some out there that are really good, but not very many. A lot of them fall into that vanity press. If you are paying thousands of dollars up front for all of these services and to get copies of your own book, you really got to look and say, what are they giving you back? And most of the time, the kinds of things they're giving you back are not worth it, um, especially if they're charging for things like, oh, well, we're going to upload your book and monitor it. That's free, guys. It is free to upload your book to Amazon and it is free to monitor it. All the reports are free. It's all free. They're not doing anything for you. Mm -hmm. 
be careful of these services. A lot of them are vanity presses. The vanity press goes back for as long as there's been presses. It's the idea that you're so desperate to get your work out there that you will pay somebody a huge grundle of money. And it's different than saying, I'm paying this specific thing for editing, this specific thing for formatting. It's thousands and thousands of dollars that you will never see back mm -hmm. just so that you can get your name on a book. And you don't and want to run into that. Will, well, and, and with vanity presses, they own your rights. So yes, they you're take your paying them all of this money and then they own the rights to your book. And, and so that's different as well, because really it is the responsibility of the publishing house to foot the bill for all of that uh, book production. So the, and that's why we call it a vanity press. <laughs> yeah. When, when you have a publisher, the author should, the money should flow towards the author, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, there are places like uh, Writer Beware, which is on <coughs> Facebook and in a couple other places where they will list some of these publishers. Um, the Science Fiction Writers Association has a list, Predators and Editors. If you're going to go down any of these paths, either with a small press or a, a traditional press or a hybrid press, always do your homework. Google them and look for such and such a press plus scam, such and such a press plus bad reviews. Go look for the, the negative things people are saying. You can look at the positive things too. We all want to see that. But you want to know, have, have other authors run into this and lost their shirts? Um, there, there's a lot of things you can do there. So be very careful about anyone who says, oh yeah, we're a hybrid publisher, but you got to pay us $5,000 up front. Um, that, that's dangerous territory. Um, so... Sorry, and just one thing, publishers are different to distributors, right? So right. this, like, again, we're going to do some separate thing, uh, a separate thing about distribution, but just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, again, two different separate things. Yes, Amazon, uh, draft to digital Barnes & Noble, iTunes, all those kinds of things, those are distributors, they're not your publisher. Right. So and they don't like own the book says, and they don't mm -hmm. own your books rights. You should own the yep. books rights. Always be careful with who you license your rights to. All right. Okay. So the last thing we're going to touch on real quick, ladies, is we've talked about um, lots of different types of publishing. So there is also service providers, because we said in self-publishing, you've got to hire all these people. And this is something that as a company, Elantum Digital uh, focuses on and something we specialize in is helping people to find services either through our company or through other companies. So what kind of services do we provide? What kind of services can people look for? Um, let's talk just a little bit about the service industry, agencies, places like Upwork, stuff like that, and then we'll tie things off. So uh, Virginie, go ahead. Okay, so there's, so Upwork is the most obvious one, but Upwork is not a, uh, so it's a platform where they, they put freelancers uh, providing all sorts of services in contact with the clients. So it's not just limited to uh, the self-publishing or uh, the publishing industry, it's, you know, anything. It's, there's a web developer, there's, I think there are even draftsmen, like something really technical to something really mundane. So it's it's uh, it's just a platform to put freelancers in touch with clients, and that's where you can go find uh, um, ghostwriters, uh, book editors, um, outliners, um, formatters, cover designers, uh, all those you know, all those um, key tasks that need to be done in uh, pro in producing a, a book. And you can also go there to get someone to uh, do social media marketing for you and um, to do some other marketing and promotion related uh, type of service. So that's Upwork. And then you have specific agencies that provide uh, all those all those tasks that I just mentioned, but specifically for uh, publishers, self publishers. Uh, so so they have everyone in there already, you know, cover designer, editor, formatter, and all that. So the it's really a matter of try, and we we don't like to recommend any particular one because th we are working with humans. So the results will vary, and you know you might find one that is great, and another one find another ghostwriter or another editor that's just crap. So 
you need to do some of your own market research. Um, another place that's really great, and it's a place called Reti. Uh, it's a great place. It's it's a platform again. They they give they they they, they have a lot of tutorial, a lot of uh, articles, mini courses, and they also have a lot of freelancers. You know, like book editors, ghostwriters. Um, uh, and, and marketing book marketing experts so it is also a great uh, platform and the people there freelancers there are very experienced so you might find that their costs or their fees are higher than what you can find say for example on Upwork uh, but you get very experienced people on that platform that platform uh, so that's the that's and there's other there's other platforms uh, as well. So with a Elantum Digital, so we pro, it's a mix of education. So we have uh, mini courses and more extensive courses uh, that we're going to upload regularly that you can purchase. Usually they are quite inexpensive because we want to make uh, this. Uh, affordable to as many people as possible. Um, and we want to, you know, to put it out there to the world that this is an awesome business model. Like I, I, I really, really, truly believe that. Um, we also offer some separate um, services like editing. We have a team of editors, very experienced editors. Uh, we have uh, formatting, but not just the uh, simple formatting where there's no images. We also do formatting with, you know, more picture heavy type of books. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one consultation. So you can meet with CJ, Jenna, some other members on the team to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session where, you know, maybe you're just starting. Where do you start? Or maybe you already have a book out there or several books out there, but they're not selling. How can we create a a marketing plan together to get your book moving. Um, or maybe you want to discuss about plot. Maybe you want to discuss, discuss about writing, character development, that kind of thing. So it's very much tailored to your own needs. And it's, as I said, in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, setting. So it's um, like having a, a conversation face-to-face -face with a, a experienced uh person in uh, in this industry and we're going to have a new services that, that will be added in we're going to have uh packages course packages that comes with coaching so but it's all in the in the ongoing we will let you guys know um i mean as we go you know and you can you can check us out as well on the website so www.elantumdigital.com uh yeah so that's that's us well, guys, this is the end of our show, but before we head on out, we are going to have one minute of completely and utterly irrelevant content. We decided that we need this to close <laughs> things out because it means that we can just have a little bit of fun. And as Virginia talked about in our very, very first podcast, we are fun loving. We have a lot of information to share, but we also like fun things. So, but it has to be fast. So, so think about what you're going to do. Virginia, what is something completely irrelevant that you want to talk about? And go. Okay. Two things. One is that my five years old daughter has a better sense of direction than me. Uh, this is very humiliating. And I'm also a little bit <laughs> proud. And the other thing is, Alexander Skarsgård, if you listen to this, I'm here for you. I'll drop everything, <laughs> husband, child, everything. I'll come over. I know that my competition is tough because I've been stalking them, but I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm ready. Just come to me. You can, uh -huh. you can reach me at contact at elantamdigital.com. <laughs> I will be there waiting for you. So oh, smooth okay. getting that email in there. Oh, Great. oh, that was smooth. Well done. All right, <laughs> CJ, is there any irrelevancy that you would like to add to everybody's life? Just that I baked the most amazing uh, batch of brownies. You put, my mom introduced me to them. This is very important. Stay with me. Uh, you put marshmallow cream on top of the brownies, and then you put this fudge icing on top of that. And oh, for yes. me, it was for heaven. Um, heavy, heavy emotional eating happened afterward. And I can safely say I ate half of that pan and I oh, feel no. Well, that's just a heart attack on the plate. But anyway. Not whatsoever. <laughs> 
appreciate it. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah, see, my, my irrelevancy isn't nearly as much fun. I'm making pear jam this weekend. Oh, I, I have a pear great. tree and everything. It, it all came ripe at once. It's, it is want to do. And so I have pounds and pounds of pears and we will be making pear jam until I can't stand it anymore. That's exciting. Please mail me some. I will, I will, I will pay do that. so much money for that. So much money. <laughs> All right. That said, let's wind up. Thanks for joining us, guys. You can find the show in the show notes at alantumdigital.com and follow our podcast on YouTube or your favorite podcast distributor. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review. See y'all later. Bye-bye, guys. Bye for now. Bye.